Yeah, guys, I know exactly what you're thinking. There's no way that this is actually a functional knife, right? I mean, right? Hello out there, and guys, let me start off by being completely honest <laughs> and say that there was a part of me, a pretty big part, that thought that this knife, the Kershaw Decibel, would be a complete disaster. Uh, when I first saw this knife, I was interested, and part of me was interested because I thought it would be a train wreck. I saw a lot of form and a potential for a lack of function on a really, really high level because this knife does not look at first glance to be even remotely ergonomic. It doesn't look like it would have a very secure lockup. Uh, it just doesn't look like a very functional kind of EDC. And uh, it struck my interest for that reason. I wanted to see what Kershaw was doing. And yeah, sometimes when Kershaw's come out that I'm interested in, I hold off on getting them. This one I picked up immediately. And I've got to tell you guys, this knife, for me, is the biggest surprise of the year so far. Strange but true. We're going to talk about it. We're going to go through all the details and all the things I like about it. It's not perfect. We're going to go through the bad things, too. But it is a surprise in the way that it performs and in the way that it feels. And I think it's a really good thing that Kershaw has done. So, yeah. Also, I do want to let you guys know, um, I hadn't seen much else out there about this knife until today. My buddy DocP91B actually posted an unboxing of this same model. I'll link to it down below. I haven't watched it yet. I don't know what he thinks about it yet, so i uh, really interested to check his video out once I film this. But, um, but yeah, Kershaw Decibel, it was on the list because of just like how different and unique it was when I first saw it. And to give Kershaw credit, I mean, they release a lot of models every single year. And they all can't be the basic traditional kind of utility knives. They have to do something different. You know, you, you can't just make 15 to 20 of the same knife. And so credit to them for a uh, interesting and unique design to at least draw people's attention. But what is it that makes it good? And what is it about the knife that you need to know? Well, let's just start with some size comparisons. And what we have is a cutting edge that is just under three inches in length. So pretty standard compared to a lot of other things that you'll see. Um, we do have 8CR 13 MOV. A few size comparisons that we're going to bring out. Really comparable to the Kershaw Leak. Another Kershaw that I talked about really recently. A little bit larger is the Dividend. But... This one really does fit in with the, the vein of the uh, the Mini Griptilian as well. And finally, something a little bit more expensive, the Inkosi. Oh, and guys, I am going to be answering a couple more viewer questions at the end of this video, so stick around for that. But, um, but yeah, those are our size comparisons, and uh, as far as weight goes, it's a relatively light knife. It is a stainless steel frame lock. But there isn't a lot going on because the whole thing is basically machined. So, um, and, and by machined, I mean it's just all cutouts. There's no like extra milling or machining on the inside because there's really nowhere to do it. So it's under three ounces for one chunk of stainless steel, basically. So you can't really complain about that. The ACR 13 MOV and a really decent utility, like kind of shaped blade. Uh, definitely works for me. The one thing that is a bit of a concern, and I, I try not to harp on this as much as other people do, but sometimes it does apply just like thickness behind the edge. Um, this knife does not come down to a very fine edge, so it isn't going to be like this great cardboard slicer. It's it's perfectly fine functionally as far as cutting goes, but um, when I was cutting it with a cutting a lot of cardboard with it, it didn't just like glide through the way um, a lot of knives with, you know, a different type of grind might perform. One other thing is that uh, a lot like uh, other Kershaws with the coated blades, um, it does show wear relatively quickly. I don't know if this is something that I could get out or scrub out. I think it's already stained though, and that's going to be the case, I'm pretty sure. Just like the Deadline and the Sagan that I talked about earlier this year, that kind of stuff is happening with this kind of finish. And so, yeah, if you're going to use this knife, don't expect it to be pristine forever. For me, not really a big concern, even though this is a lot more flashy and more looks-oriented than, say, your other kind of EDC knives. As we move on back, 
One of the really great aspects about this knife is the jimping. Um, the jimping is actually really grippy. And yeah, when I first got this knife in hand, um, I was surprised at how ergonomic it was and really struggling to get it focused, sorry. But um, yeah, surprised at how ergonomic it was. And then when I got my thumb on the jimping, it locked in pretty nicely. So yeah, I didn't have any issue with it really at all. And so that was a good thing, really good thing, and a surprise that, you know, again, when we're talking about a knife that is more flare than anything else, uh, having that extra detail to give us functional jimping shows that there was a little bit more of a commitment to um, to using the knife and not just uh, showing off an interesting looking piece. Um, continuing with ergonomics, though, this was the big surprise, and this is really what the, the game changer was for me. Uh, in my like initial impression of what this knife could be versus what it is, is that it's comfortable. It is surprisingly comfortable in hand. Um, where I found myself holding the knife was just like beneath this oversized pivot. So beneath the pivot here uh, is basically the most comfortable spot. And then I had two fingers here, two more on the back, and it worked. And then jimping was good. Now, depending on how you hold it, like the butt of the knife might dig into the palm just a little bit, but I really didn't have that kind of issue. And while when I'm cutting and, and doing just whatever the task is, a lot of times over the course of cutting, I'll change like grip and go into like a, a different fingered grip or whatever it was. Basically, the entire time that I was cutting, I just stuck with this grip and it worked. And, and that's weird. I don't naturally do that, but with this knife, I did. And... And yeah, it, it never was an issue, just surprisingly enough. Now as we move on back and take a look at the stainless steel frame lock, um, the contouring is interesting. It's sort of like a fold right here. And you know, on the other side, it's like completely cut out. We have a, a pretty good looking backspacer. I do like that pop of blue. And then getting all the way to the back of the knife with the clip. <laughs> It's an odd clip, not necessarily the best clip on the planet, guys, uh, but it is reversible. And it's relatively deep, a little bit hard to get in and out of pants that don't have a firm pocket. So I found myself like with um, with like uh, khaki shorts, basically, like having to use two hands to like shove it in. But then when I was wearing jeans, it slid right in. So again, just depending on like the firmness of the material, you might have issues getting it in. No issues getting it out though. And yeah, I mean, if you're looking for something unique, you definitely have something unique with the clip and it still works fine enough. Another big surprise though, another big positive with the knife is the lockup. Um, here, let's just hear that again. So it just comes right over and actuates and locks up really solid. So great solid lockup, no movement up and down or left and right. And one of my concerns, uh, usually with budget kind of frame locks nowadays is sometimes that lockup just isn't quite perfect. And you get a little bit of movement in the lock bar, especially with no like over travel stop or anything like that. And with a design like this, I was thinking, man, <laughs> It, uh, it just does not seem like it's meant to lock up well. And you just look at all of the, just like the geometry of it and the shape of the bar and how like thin it is going all the way down. Like how is this going to be a sturdy locking knife with, you know, just not a lot around it. And yeah, it is good. It's really good. So yeah, there just are a number of things that just jump out at me as, as just being noteworthy and and surprises where uh, I would have expected a knife that looks like this to to not execute and this one is doing like all the things that I yeah that I didn't really think it would. As far as action goes, um, material wise, that's sort of been a disappointment with Kershaw's line for for all of 2019. Um, last year and the year before that, they had a lot of the, the import knives on KVT ball bearings. This year, I don't really think any of them are. They're all just on washers. This is on like Teflon. So, I mean, it does flick open real well, like really well. 
but it's not going to drop shut. Not a lot of friction, and it is centered pretty nicely. But yeah, it's just not going to be that kind of like free dropping knife. But um, you know, if you put pressure, obviously with this being a frame lock, if you put too much pressure on the side and you're trying to open it, you won't be able to. But yeah, I'm trying to. On occasion, if I'm holding the knife just right, I can like spider flick it. There, I can do it left-handed and spider flick it left-handed. So that's pretty cool. And it sort of shows just how well that's executed. Detent is pretty solid too. So yeah, it just does a lot of things well that I wasn't expecting. And when it comes down to it, you know, what I was thinking was that this was going to be just that flashy kind of knife that Kershaw puts out. And it's sort of like not really high quality, but but someone will just pick it up for the looks and the aesthetics, and, and that would be that. But what they've done here is actually create a knife that is compelling for a number of reasons to a number of different people. And what I mean by that is that when you make a knife like this that, that you can actually use, and again, like let's be clear, what I said before just about the blade shape and everything, it's not going to be a performer on the level of a blade like the Dividend. You know, and it's not going to be a performer, you know, because of the steel, you know, like uh, the Griptilian and the grind and, and all that stuff. I mean, there, there are some things that are going to hold it back from being just a workhorse, but it is still going to be able to do everything that just a regular person day in and day out would need for EDC. And so if you're looking for that knife, like just uh, one decent knife that maybe has a story behind it and, you know, will catch an eye and just um, be a little bit unique. This is still going to be able to do everything you need to do and fit that sort of cool factor, you know, and, you know, I, I see knives that sort of have this kind of like unique look and they're either a lot more expensive or just super, super dirt gas, gas station cheap. And this sort of fits in the middle and is appealing because it can still do just about everything you need a knife to do. So, yeah, guys, I am impressed with this knife. I think it was like 39 40 bucks, something like that. And, yeah, it's a surprise. I don't think it's going to be like a top 10 knife of the year or anything, but it's something that Kershaw has done, and they've done it well. And, yeah, I just, uh, it's good to have that feeling where you weren't expecting anything great, and, and you end up with something that is, that is more than mediocre. I'll, I'll, I'll give it that. So Kershaw Decibel, pretty cool knife there, guys. Um, that's really all I got about it. I do have a couple questions that I'm going to answer today. So the first one um, was, what hobbies do I have or have I had besides knives? And I got to tell you, <laughs> I have been a serial hobbyist for like forever. So I get into something and I just go all out with it for, you know, as long as I can until I, I move on to something else. Hopefully that never happens with knives, but, uh, but I mean, I'm, I'm really, really into Star Wars, but before like all, all that stuff, before I got really into like knives and, and Star Wars like that, um, I was pretty obsessed with the Civil War. So I read tons of books about the Civil War and, uh, and documentaries and stuff like that and, and then nature and animals and like and science and, and evolutionary biology, stuff like that. <laughs> um, years ago, I was really into WWE and I still sort of follow it. I don't watch regularly at all, but I still sort of know what's going on because it's just a cool thing. Uh, you know, and a lot of like nostalgia that I have when it comes to, uh, to, to stuff like wrestling. So yeah, those are just sort of a breakdown of the hobby. Sports definitely too. Um, Another question that someone had is, if you had 100 to $150 to spend on a knife, what would you pick up? And, God, I wish I had one. I wish I, wish I had one to show you guys. But um, I would probably pick up anything from Mastrop. So Mastrop, the, the Mastrop knives that are made uh, by Wii, so many of those knives that are in like the 100 to $150 mark, like the, the Crux, the Falcon, which I've had on the channel... Um, or the Mass Drop Gent, which is even less than $100, I think. 
with so many of those knives, you're getting a quality that I think is better than what you're paying for. So if you really want to maximize like a hundred to one hundred and fifty dollar knife uh, and get get something that that feels like it's more expensive, um, that's a really good way to do it. I would definitely recommend checking out all the different uh, things that they have out there. Oh, and the, the dog tooth. I had the dog tooth on the channel recently too. Um, and then the last thing, what's my favorite Benchmade of all time? And I haven't even shown it on the channel yet, uh, but I've gotten just recently, thanks to my buddy Stasa23, um, I got it. It's my favorite Benchmade of all time. It's the Aries. It is uh, the Benchmade Aries, probably my favorite knife design of all time. For a long time, I always talked about the Colgara being my favorite Benchmade that I owned, and um, it was. But now that I have this, and this is the the, uh, the 730, uh, yeah, it's going to be hard to beat this one. So, yeah, favorite Benchmade of all time. It just fits my hand perfectly. Alan Louise, excuse me, Alan Alishowitz design. So, yeah, really good stuff there. But anyway, guys, that's it. So thanks very much for watching. Any other questions, comments, complaints, suggestions, let me know down below, especially about that decibel. What's your thoughts on it? All right, but I'll talk with you soon. Take care and have a good one.